Hello, new viewer. There is a lot of interesting and surprising things in this new story, which is called Birthday Surprise. So make some tea and enjoy watching. How could this be in her closet? Chapter 1 An inside look. My wife is a hot damn wife, though, I said to myself, as I looked at the items stashed in the Victoria's secret bag. Yeah, this is going to be a birthday. I'll remember for a long time, I said, with a satisfied smile, as I stashed the bag back in my wife's closet. You see, I'm turning 40 on Saturday, and though my wife hasn't said anything to me, it looks like this weekend is going to be my lucky one. Looks like I'll be treating my elephant to a sweet treat soon. It should be noted that Irene and I have had a bit of a strained relationship over the last couple months. Irene is, you know, my wife of 14 years. It seemed that lately, no matter what I did, I was constantly pissing her off. Said the wrong thing. Put it the wrong way. Picked up the wrong thing. Went the wrong way. What's the big deal? A lot of people know what a woman is out of sorts. And every time we had an argument, it became an almost daily tradition. In the evening, I'd make an immodest proposal to my Irie, hoping to see if her feminine side was all right. And every time she assured me that everything was in order sexually, and no check was required. Frankly, I was afraid I'd have to go manual, or find a part-time understudy. No, I'm not an old-timer to be ignored like this. I'm a man's man. In or out? Yeah, that's a little ambiguous. Anyway, the situation is as clear and sad as the eyes of a milk cow. That evening, while my wife and kids were running around outside, I went into Irie's dressing room to find our old photo albums. I was looking for a particular picture. It showed my brother Roger and me standing next to our road Harleys. Back then, we both had long hair, beards, and leather tresses. We thought we were tough guys. Racing all over the state, banging on electric guitars, yelling Mr. Lonnelly into microphones and squeezing girls. Yeah. Lately, the kids have often told me I'm too hard on them. And they've been snidely wondering if I've always been such a boring blowhard. I'll show them that their father was a badass in his day, I mumbled. I just wish I could find that picture. They'd know I wasn't always hauling ass in the office, and I had some life experience. Standing on the chair, I reached for the stack of albums on the cabinet and lost my balance. Saying a lot of ugly things, I collapsed to the floor, taking a whole pile of my wife's clothes with me. Well, fuck me, I said, getting to my feet and looking at what I had done. This woman definitely has too many clothes, I argued to myself as I finished hanging up the last dress. I was about to try to climb up for the albums again when I noticed the shopping bag behind the winter coats. Pulling it out, I looked inside. There lay three sets of underwear that would make even a prostitute blush. The first was a light purple color and looked like a short nightgown for dolls. That's what my wife wore on our wedding night. The second was thin black and almost transparent. The material was obviously wasted. This one was about four times smaller than the purple one. The third one made my blood boil. This one was scarlet in color and made mostly of transparent lace. What really set it apart was that it had a cleverly built-in bra. And where the breasts would normally be, there were round holes. At the bottom of the bag were thongs of matching colors, different for each outfit. All of the items still had price tags on them, and I was shocked at how expensive it all was. Damn it, I thought to myself as I put the bag back in its place. They're worth every penny I spent on them. This must be her way of burying the hatchet. Or to make the rooster sing, so to speak. Tell me frankly, what would you think if you saw such lascivious wealth? You see, I didn't think about it. At that time, despite my age, I was quite stupid. I thought the whole world, or at least my family, revolved around me. Well, of course it does. I'm the fucking center of the universe. That's so. A digression to cheer you up. I spent the rest of the evening smiling like a retard. The world was beautiful again. I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. At dinner, my wife asked me if I'd had a drink while they were out. I reassured her by explaining that I was just thankful to God for such a beautiful family. Still shining like a brand new quarter, I went to bed that night, blissfully remembering the magic bag full of sensual amusements. I tried to roll up on Irie, but she said, as usual, that she was tired, that she had a headache, that we'd wake the kids, that she wasn't in the mood, that she wanted to sleep, and that let's do it next time. Whatever you say, darling, I agreed, kissing her gently on the cheek 
and whispering words of love. Then I turned around and fell asleep peacefully. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I slept for, like, four hours. Visions of Irene dressed in those voluptuous rags danced in my brain all night. No matter what I dreamed, I couldn't clear my mind and get rid of the ironclad arousal. In my dreams, my wife and I made love in different positions ten times before my alarm clock went off and put an end to my fantasies. As exhausted as I was, I was still at the peak of vitality. I took a quick shower and shave first, and then jumped down the stairs like a fireman. When the rest of us came down to the dining room yawning and scratching ourselves, we saw that breakfast for the whole family was on the table, and I was sitting down with a cup of coffee and reading the newspaper. Dad, are you on the afterburner or something? Keith asked me. You never eat breakfast in the morning, let alone cook it, he added with a surprised look on his face. Irene looked at me in amazement too. Who the hell are you, and what have you done with my husband? I'm right here, honey. Just wanted to take care of all of you. Well, thank you, dear, she said, pouring herself a cup of coffee. My daughter, Terry, who was always a bit of a mouthful, just started mashing sausage and eggs with her fork. Great breakfast, Daddy. Love you, she said, stuffing her mouth. Well, I rubbed my palms together. I guess I should go out and make some money. Don't get bored here without me. Tipping Irie over the back of the chair, I kissed her goodbye to each of the kids. Everyone at the table was stunned. What happened to Dad? Keith asked his mother. I know it's his birthday on Saturday, but does that happen when you turn forty? He said, finishing his sausage. Irie slapped my departing butt and grinned. Your dad's just in a good mood, that's all, she said. But she probably didn't believe it for a minute. She caught up with me on the porch. Jim, what's going on? Are you up to something? What do you suspect me of, dear? I haven't seen you in such a racy mood since we went on that weekend cruise over ten years ago. Hell, we didn't even leave our cabin then, she said with a hint of a smile. But we didn't have a love scene last night. Admit it. Did you get someone? Eerie, how could you think that? You, the mother of my children. God, aren't you ashamed of yourself? I replied before jumping into the car and driving away. Well, well... My wife said after me. When I walked into the office, I was still on the upswing. Good morning, Carol. I smiled at my secretary. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? A minute later, I came back and asked, Would you like a cup of coffee and a donut? Sure, boss, but... Was all she could say before I disappeared from the office. I returned a few minutes later with a cup of hot coffee, a glazed donut, and even a napkin. All she could do was squeeze out a thank you before I left again. By noon, everyone in the office was wondering who the new guy was. Several people came up to Carol and asked if Jim had been promoted. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm afraid it can't last, she told them. And it did. At least for a few days. By five o'clock I was out of the office, and I wished a good evening to everyone who would listen. Irene was about to leave work when her cell phone rang. It was me. Hi, honey. Instead of cooking tonight, I'm going to stop and get Chinese food for dinner. You want anything special? No, get the usual, Jim. Are you all right? She asked apprehensively. I thought she was afraid of my answer. I'm fine. Why do you ask? I said in the nicest tone of voice I could muster. I just haven't seen you so... so chipper. I don't know. In the last few months, Erie replied. She was probably trying to figure out what the hell was going on with her husband. Irie... Honey, I just realized how much I love you and the kids, and how lucky I am to have all of you. Sorry, I have to pass out before I get in an accident. I'll see you at home, honey. Thursday night was the same as Wednesday. I was having a lot of fun and acting like a teenager. I walked up behind Irene as she was washing dishes, and put my arms around her and kissed her neck. Jim, she exclaimed, let me finish the dishes, or one of us is going to get hurt, and it won't be me. At that, she blushed, as if she had never heard such a thing before. The kids and I spent most of the evening putting together a giant jigsaw puzzle on the kitchen table. It was fun, and we laughed when, for example, a bear grew a leg instead of a nose. Irie watched in amazement. By ten o'clock the children had gone to bed, and I got ready for bed too. I didn't know what to expect from my wife tonight. She was still awake and reading a book when I went to bed.
I don't know where you get your energy from, but could you give me some? She said with a smile. I'm completely exhausted today, but I'll be fine by the weekend. And then we'll do something. I promise. She kissed me. It's okay, honey. I understand, I replied, before grabbing her and pulling her to me. I kissed her not once, but three times. That's what they call a goodnight kiss, I said with a smile. That should keep me warm, at least until the weekend. With those words, I turned around, turned off the light, and fell asleep. Leaving a stunned Irene staring into the darkness, Friday I remained complacent waiting for a miracle. In the morning, breakfast awaited the children. Today it was oatmeal, toast, and orange juice. Dad, look, I could get used to this, Keith said. I can't wait for Saturday, Terry said, shoveling oatmeal into her mouth. Everyone started to eat. How about we make homemade pizza for dinner tonight? I asked everyone. The kids mooed approvingly, and Irene just stood there with her mouth open. Okay, then it's settled. I'll buy everything on the way home. Well, I gotta go. Love you guys, I said with a smile as I walked over to Irene. I picked her up, turned her around and kissed her. Love you kids. And left. Running into my office, I carried two cups of coffee and apple fritters for Carol. I wished everyone a good morning, placing the unpretentious breakfast on the secretary's desk. In the office, I was laying out the papers I'd been working on this week when Carol walked in. She closed the door. So, okay, what the hell is going on? She asked me, sitting down with a coffee and a pancake in the chair in front of my desk. I started to say something about how life is good and whatnot, when Carol stopped me. Jim, don't wax my brain. I've been working with you for twelve years, and you've never been in such a good mood before. Are you on drugs? My jaw almost hit the countertop. Carrie, baby, what's wrong with you? Then no, she stated. Then it's one of three things. Either you won the lottery, and you're gonna pay me back this weekend. Or you're out on the town, and you're getting more love than all of us combined. Or, the last one, you got a promotion I don't know about. What's going on, Jimmy? The masses are outraged. And I'm not leaving this office until you tell me what's wrong with you. She's got her arms crossed over her chest. All right, fine. But it's not going to go any further than this office. You got a deal? I told her. She nodded readily. I've complained to you before. Irene and I have been going through a rough patch over the past few months. And with my fortieth birthday approaching, I haven't been in the best of moods lately. Carol nodded again, and I continued. Well, I happened to look in Irie's closet the day before yesterday, and found some sexy lingerie that she apparently only bought for my birthday, I said with a smile. Uh-huh. So... All you found was these thingamajigs that women use to blow men's brains out? Let me just say they'll bring a dead man back to life, if you know what I mean. So it looks like I'm in for a wild weekend. And that's all I'm gonna tell you. I was shining like a pissed-off oligophrenic. God, I was hoping for a promotion so you could take me upstairs with you. Carrie sighed. Carol, I'm sorry I didn't live up to your expectations. But you know I'm working on it all the time. Well, try to work even harder today, because you'll probably be useless on Monday, if you come crawling back at all, Carol said, as she left my office. I had been looking at my watch all day. Jesus Christ, would this day ever end? Finally, it beeped five, and I was out in a flash, shouting to Carol that I would see her on Monday. Stopping at the supermarket, I bought all the pizza groceries for today, and headed home. Maybe she'll wear something from that set today, I thought. There were three of them in the bag. That is, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. Oh well, I can handle this load, I said to myself as I pulled out into the driveway. Irene stayed behind while the kids and I needed pizza dough. Terry cut up the sausage, tomatoes, and olives, while Kate rolled out the dough and spread it into pans. All in all, the homemade pizzas looked pretty good, but the kids thought they looked just fine. One pizza was a little overdone, but the other pizza turned out great. The kids marveled at how easy they could make their own pizza and how good it tasted. Ha! I think we did better than store-bought, Terry announced. The only thing that annoyed me was that for the second day in a row, Irene just sat there and didn't join in. She didn't even offer any help. Oh well, tomorrow we'll make up for it, I said to myself with a smile, 
and a lot of anticipation. Before I went to bed, the kids told me they were going to make breakfast for me, so I'd better stay in bed until they were ready. No problem, guys, I told them. I was already lying under the covers when Irene walked into the bedroom. She took off her clothes, heading for the bathroom. I froze in impatience. Here, now. Here, here. Come on, baby. Come on. To be continued.